I know Strive players don't got a lot of patience nowadays. At least that's what Proxy, the cult leader, told me. So I was checking my bank and I realized I got no money. I was seriously broke. Why? Because Alex has added more items to Strive. Man! I love fishing. Anyway, I'm getting off topic. I need to get some money, and fast. The gig? Win Sunday face-off. So I went to the venue and played through the bracket. And I played good. I was fast, unpredictable. Normally I'd be playing like shit, but today I was the shit. Next thing you know, I was in winner's finals. It was all going smoothly. Until he showed up. Top seed of the tournament and a thing that everyone fears. A good Zano player. This could be trouble, but I wasn't too worried. He knocked me into the loser's bracket, and when I got my run back, it didn't matter. I lost. After that match, I made a promise to myself I wouldn't lose the next time we met. I want to be number one. Short and simple enough for you? It's going to be a long, hard road. But who knows? Could kick ass. Could be dangerous. Could totally suck. What'd you say, bro? Join me. Let's see how far we can take this. And for you watching on YouTube right now, keep watching. It's about to get real good. Let the bloodshed begin. You know, sometimes the world works in strange ways. Every single one of us has our own unique experiences, our own perspectives, our own lives. We see hundreds of people every day going about their own lives, yet we barely interact with any of them. The odds of randomly encountering the same person twice in any given situation is generally so small that humans have to come up with concepts to explain them. Fate, luck, fortune, gods, all of these things used by humans to explain situations they cannot understand. So which of these entities made me face you again? I want to get good at Guilty Gear Strive. For those of you who randomly stumbled across this channel and have no idea what Guilty Gear is, welcome! It's great to have you here. Let's get you up to speed. Guilty Gear Strive is a 1v1 anime fighting game where two players fight each other in order to see who's better. The objective is to get the opponent's HP to zero before the time runs out. Matches are divided into rounds and players have to win two rounds against their opponent in order to win. That's the basics of the game, but there's a lot more under the hood, obviously. Don't worry though, I'll explain as we go along and it becomes relevant. This has been a task of mine for a long time now, basically since I started playing the game. However, recently over the past few months I've been taking it more seriously. Like, much more seriously. But why didn't you take it seriously from the start? I hear you ask into the void where no one but me, a pre-recorded version of my voice, can hear you. Well, there was actually several reasons. Being in university and then a full-time job, I didn't actually have much time to practice and participate in tournaments, so that never really helped anything out. But there was actually another problem. This originally wasn't supposed to be about Guilty Gear. In fact, it was supposed to be about Tekken 7. And with crazy character combos, insane neutral, no projectiles, and easily one of the best offline experiences you could ever ask for in a fighting game, why did I decide to change the game a month into competing in Tekken? Well, the answer is simple. The online's fucking garbage. I'm not sure if you've noticed, but the world isn't exactly the safest place to meet up in right now, and this was basically triple so at the start of the year, so I couldn't exactly go to my locals when they weren't running, leaving online as my only option, and I hated every second of it. I'm not upset that I tried it though, it was a good learning experience and solidified in my brain that we need good rollback in every fighting game. So then, why Guilty Gear? Yeah. Meet my main. Her name is Giovanna. She likes her dog and her unique sense of professionalism. Because it looks incredibly stupid. I disagree, but don't go around saying that, got it? 
This was designed by the president himself. Did he design that ugly shirt too? Enough already. Just prepare for your training. And button up your shirt. But then how will I catch a good man? And she disliked the smell of cigarettes and alcohol. Same. In game, she's a rushdown character, focusing on getting in on her opponent, sticking to them like glue, and punishing them for being an idiot. I've played her since the game came out, and it would have to take a large change in the way that she played in order for me to drop her, because I love her so much. While most characters in Guilty Gear are seen as complex with deep move lists, Giovanna is simple with one goal in mind. Get in and make the enemy's life a living hell. And I love that. Get used to seeing the dog girl, because she's here to stay. But hold on. What's the actual goal here? What am I trying to accomplish? Getting good at something is pretty vague, after all. Well, let's talk about being good. With anything that requires a specific level of skill, it's common for people to want to be seen as good in that skill for self-gratification and the respects of others. But the word good is a very vague one. Being good at something could mean several different things, depending on the field and the skill range that you're in. A kid being able to kick a ball into a net when they're three years old could be seen as them being good at Little League football, but if you put them next to a professional or just a competent adult with functioning limbs, suddenly that kid looks really bad, and the adult looks like an arsehole for playing football against children. So when we say someone is good at something, what do we generally mean? Better than most? Average? Maybe they're the best we know, or maybe they're just a friend and we think highly of them. Defining what we mean by good is important, so that we're all on the same page on what I'm trying to do here. In order to make accurate goals, however, we need to know where we're starting. Currently, I am a low-level Celestial player who's been able to get into Celestial consistently. The highest I've scored at a local tournament is second. See, look, the intro was, like, actually relevant. You know, I planned it. I'm cool with this. And the best I've done online is top three, but that was a tournament near the start of the game and there was like eight people playing. So let's just say that I don't have lots of experience with online tournaments. The most online tournament experience I do have is one run in Salty EU and one run in Salt Mine League, which you can see in this video here. To catch everybody up to speed who hasn't seen the video, I played in Salt Mine League on the Saturday and got my shit kicked in with a Geo Mirror match and got really tilted. Lost to a Potemkin and then raged a lot. I then played in Salty EU on the next Monday, and due to literally the power of friendship, I wasn't tilted after losing to a Sol and an Eno. In fact, the Eno kicked my ass so hard, I'm genuinely surprised to this day that I didn't get tilted during that match. You know, those ponies might have been onto something. While this isn't exactly nothing when it comes to a starting point, there's still a lot of things to strive towards in order to track my progress. So in order to get better at Guilty Gear Strive, I decided to create four distinct challenges for myself to complete. All of these challenges are based around competitive aspects relating to Guilty Gear Strive in some way. Each challenge is designed to test specific elements of me as a fighting game player. Nah, just kidding, they all just sounded cool. Though they do range in difficulty, with some of them seeming easy, and the others may take me literally years to complete. But when I say competitive aspects of Guilty Gear Strive, what exactly do I mean? Well, in Strive specifically, there's two ways to prove your worth as a player. The tower and tournaments. The competitive community generally agrees that tournaments are the more reliable way to see how good players are compared to Celestial, so the series is mostly going to be focusing around different tournaments and events that require skill. This doesn't mean I'll be ignoring the rank tower altogether. As someone who's had his ideas described as gamer shit, I still care about this dumb system because I have brain rot and I need to go to the doctors. But before I let a doctor psychoanalyze my trauma, let's go through the four different challenges. Challenge one. Get an aura. The aura is a special item awarded to the top players on the Strive Celestial ranked ladder at the end of every month. It has three different colors which affects the color around your name tag in game and swells around your avatar in the lobby. You can only keep them for that month and aren't able to toggle them on or off. If anything, auras can be seen as a nuisance as they obstruct the view of your character and the things around you, but I just think they look really cool. Maybe it's the leftover Dragon Ball brain rot, but auras to mean literally mean power. And the way that it swirls around character models makes them look really cool. So I want one and you can't stop me from getting it. However, I have no idea how to actually get one. I'm pretty sure because of the way that the leaderboard is set up, you get different auras based on which area of the leaderboard you're on. However, due to getting top 1,500 last month and not having an aura, that may be wrong. We'll just have to see. Challenge two. 
win a local tournament. In the fighting game community, there are different tiers of tournaments. You've got local tournaments, which are small tournaments for one town or city that run regularly, regionals, which are slightly bigger but run less often, and major tournaments, which happen once a year and attract players from all over the globe. Obviously, the higher up you go on these tournaments, the bigger the prize pool gets and the harder the competition gets. Local tournaments are the life and soul of the FGC. Without people going to meet up in person to play their favorite fighting games against other passionate people, we literally wouldn't have the amazing community that we have today. I want to represent this aspect of our games through this series and pay my respects to the community that has made me who I am today. But you may notice I said, a hey, local and not my local. What's that about? The local in my city, Sunday Face-Off, is an extremely well-run tournament and the TOs do an amazing job every time that I play in the bracket. I'm very grateful for the work that they put on and everything they do for the local community. They even run Guilty Gear Drive on PC for fuck's sake. They care about the games that we play. However, Due to them having lives, they're only able to run a tournament once a month. Meaning, the consistency of which I'm able to attempt runs again is pretty small. There's also no guarantee that Strive will be on the roster of games every month. So, if I do not complete the challenge before the end of Strive at Sunday Face-Off, I'll be screwed. If it comes to a point where I have to go to another local, I'll make sure to shout them out, but I don't have any plans of bringing up this section of the challenge for the rest of the video. Sorry if the intro got you hyped for that. Um, uh, maybe not as good as planning this stuff as I thought. Challenge free. Top 16 at a stacked online tournament. Due to Strive having an extremely good online netcode, online tournaments for Guilty Gear Strive are consistently populated and extremely stacked week after week. Originally, this section of the challenge was specifically going to be Salt Mine and Salty EU, and while these tournaments are going to make up the majority of my runs for this challenge, due to more recent Strive events, I've had to broaden out the definition of this challenge because Arxis can't fix their fucking lobbies from getting hacked, you piece of shit. So what classes as a stacked online tournament? I want to keep the definition of this pretty loose. It's gonna be extremely hard to check each tournament to make sure the stuff is definitely stacked. So the definition is going to be there's more than 40 players in the tournament. There are several known players in the bracket. Since I live in good old Blighty, this of course means known EMEA players. While I'm sure some of you freedom lovers will look at the brackets I end up playing in and go, who the fuck is there? For me, if I look in the bracket and I know that there is several killers in it, it counts as a stack bracket. Double so if I play them round one or round two, which happens way more than I would like to admit. And finally, Challenge four, make it out of pools at a major. Major tournaments are obviously a big deal. Thousands of players competing for a big, for the FGC, prize with the best of the best from different regions traveling to play each other. I've never been to a major, but I've always admired them from afar. But that finally changes this year. I'm going to be going to two major tournaments to compete in Strive, and the goal is to simply make it out of pools. If you don't know, a pool in a major tournament is basically like a mini tournament that's used to weed out the weaker players and let the top players fight each other. Normally only two people make it out of pools, so beating a pool is pretty cool and that's why it's on the list. But unfortunately for me, most of the majors are based in the United States of America and I'm not. You guys are so lucky you have one every couple of months. In the UK, we got one and it's called Versus Fighting. And I'm very excited to go to Versus Fighting. I have heard very good things. But here's the thing. Thanks to you guys and my super best friend Proxicon, I'll actually be able to choose one major in the United States to go to this year. I seriously can't thank you all enough for giving me this opportunity that I've wanted for literally years. And I really have to give major props to Proxy. If it wasn't for his support, this part of the challenge wouldn't be possible. I also have to give it to all of you. I know we're starting out the video, but like, thank you. This shit's crazy. I'm I'm gonna be able to go to a major this year. It's kind of it's kind of crazy, bro. But what tournament will I be going to? Currently, I have two choices. The first is Combo Breaker. The venue's open 24 hours with setups of every game you could have ever seen. The commentators are in the audience and the vibe is completely unmatched. It is easily one of the hypest tournaments in the FGC. And the other one is the one that I decided to go to, and it's called EVO. I'm fucking going to EVO, baby! Yeah! EVO is the biggest fighting game tournament in the world. It has the highest player count, the biggest announcement, the legacy stretching over 25 years. Not got the biggest prize pot, but we got Sony money, so, you know, 
we're working on it. Going to Evo has been a dream of mine for a long time time and i'm finally fucking going and i'm so excited oh so let's be honest what other tournament was i gonna try and complete this challenge at it's evo my guy of course i'm gonna do it so those are the four challenges as you can see most of them revolve around tournaments with the one exception of getting an aura and while i would love to tell you how things play out in the future i'm not a time traveler well not yet Due to that, all of the events in this video are going to be in the past, thus meaning all of the footage you're gonna see is from season one of Strive and a couple of months old because these things take a while. Anyway, let's start off around where I left you. I just bombed out of Soul the EU, but I was feeling good about myself. I took a week off to make the Tilt and Mental video, and when I was next available, I entered another Soul to EU tournament. While I would like to say that I entered every tournament every week for both Salty EU and Salt Mine League, there's the small problem of I have to make videos for a living. Not to mention if I'm feeling particularly shitty that day, I won't join because losing would just make me feel worse. Sometimes you have to take some time off even when grinding, and that's okay. Anyway. It had been two weeks since my last Salty EU run. I was entering the tournament now with one sole goal in mind. Don't go 0-2. In every fighting game tournament, no matter what game it is, 50% of the players will lose their first match. This means that in round one, half of the tournament is knocked out. This isn't exactly the most fair and makes players kind of feel like crap. So there's two different brackets for people to play in. The winner's bracket and the loser's bracket. If you win your matches, you stay in the winner's bracket. But if you lose while you're in the winner's bracket, you get sent to the loser's bracket. Once there, if you lose again, you're knocked out of the tournament for good. This basically means that everyone has two lives while playing in the tournament. This type of format is known as the double elimination tournament. So what does going 0-2 mean? Well, it means that you lose your matches without winning a single one, aka you come in last place. If I don't go 0-2, it means that I beat 25% of the players in the bracket. And since the last time I played in the tournament, I went 0-2, I think this is a good starting goal. I went into Salt EU pretty optimistic, considering my last run in the tournament. Why? Well, remember the No More Heroes reference intro? Yeah, that took place between the last tournament and now, meaning I had a second place under my belt. I got nothing to worry about. That'll be fine. But then, disaster struck. Oh my fucking god. They're playing Birthday Train. A dark omen indeed. I'm not a man of superstition. I don't really believe in luck. However, on this day, my faith was tested as this omen appeared to lead to a great misfortune. All right, so this is the final bracket we are gonna have on stream. Um, let's don't. do uh, Gecko Spawn. No, no, fuck. <laughs> for those of you who don't know, sometimes people live stream their tournaments on Twitch for other people to spectate. And because apparently playing smart and choosing my fights is bitch behavior, my punishment is playing on stream against Agubagu, one of the best biken mains in the world. This isn't a joke. At the time of writing, he is the 65th best biken in the world. At the time, however, I had no idea who he was or what to expect. And then I saw this. Oh, you have got to be fucking with me! A red aura. Awarded to the strongest celestial gamers out there. We'll get into what this actually means later. But for now, just know that this guy means fucking business. I was going to be in for the ride of my life. Duel 1. Let's rock. Round one of the game was much closer than I expected, having both of us dip to yellow health. This might not be so bad after all. I mean, I even take the second round, which is way closer than it needed to be. Yeah! Yeah, this guy ain't shit. I got the fuck I spoke too soon. This meant Agu had taken the first matches, meaning that he was up 1-0. Now, in competitive fighting games, normally players need to win two full matches in order to win the set, making it a best of three. However, since Strive is a volatile fighting game, players need to win three full matches in order to advance through the bracket. So I still had at least one match to figure him out and find a weakness in his game plan. Yeah, that didn't happen. Agu absolutely trounced me, taking the match easily. My lack of knowledge of Baikun really showed in this match, and I'm silently defeated without much resistance on my end. He had figured me out. 
is what a bitch would say. I went into match free motivated to take this man down, and I was going to show him that I won't lay down and take this kind of treatment. Listen to the determination in my voice. <sighs> That's the spirit! My neutral, clean. My pressure, insane. My reads are the third grade level easily. My combos, out of this fucking world. How did I win this actually? This isn't terrible. <laughs> With my absolutely insane geo skills, I clutch the round and pop off appropriately. Let's go! I take that moment and absolutely sprint with it into the next round. Absolutely nothing can stop me now. Why is that quote attributed to someone who's going to lose a set? Fuck! So, I lost the set. But you know, it's fine. Everyone loses. As long as I don't let it affect my mental or get me down, I should be fine. We can just go to the next match and not have to worry about it. It'll be fine. Post-match Gecko, how are you holding up? <sighs> I mean... It happens. It, it sucks, but it, it happens. Um... Oh no. So, as you can see, not taking it the best. But we got a bunch of time before the next match. After watching a bit of the stream set and playing in Celestial to keep myself warmed up, I find my next opponent in Loser's Round 1, the Sol Trikeza. Now, Sol is the kind of character who's similar to Geo, but with a more complicated kit that's not necessarily as effective. He wants to rush you down and stick to you, but he has a harder time getting in depending on who you're playing. But. This is Sol versus Geo. We just kind of monkey at each other until one of us gets our pressure. And he got it first. Mayday! Mayday! I need help! I'm trapped in the corner and there's a big gorilla man throwing me against the wall! My coordinates are at- It's fine though, it was just the first match. Start of match two, come out hitting absolute home run. Ding is all the way, just fucking this guy up. Not letting him breathe, getting the round, taking that momentum, and instantly falling over and planting my face into the pavement. It's fine though, there's one more match, and it's still pretty close. You just gotta make sure that you don't get put in the blend. L, L, and I'm out of the bracket. Our first tournament back gave us last place with a 0-2 record once again. My morale was basically crushed, but I left the session with a nice little piece of optimism. There's always next week, right? The next tournament run started eerily similar to the previous one. Why do I why do I have to fight Envy, bro? Man, stop being a little whiny why, baby! Why do we, you're not the one fighting Envy? They it doesn't man. Oh, envy. It doesn't matter! On the daily, bro! Gecko sounds like a skill issue to me. <laughs> Who are all those voices at the start of the recording? Well, if it isn't the denizens of the Gluida's Discord, a Discord that I have somehow become a literal god in despite the fact that I don't eat enough paste. Do you want to have sparse updates on the stuff I'm working on? Do you want to still miss my streams because I'm too much of an anxious bitch to at everyone when I go live? Do you just have too few many brain cells in your head? Even if you answered no to all of those questions, you should join the Gluders Discord and hang out with the cool people in it. You will lose brain cells, I cannot stress that enough. With my first match once again being against a high level player on stream, I was beginning to see a pattern of how these runs were going to go. I don't know which TO god I pissed off in order to deserve this punishment, but at least this time, I was going to take my lashings with a smile on my face. Mostly. Honestly, for the first round, I was playing well, like, uncharacteristically well. I was mashing up good points, I was punishing negative moves, my neutral wasn't awful, and I spent most of the time on the ground, not jumping like an idiot. Honestly, if it wasn't for my addiction to air supers, I generally think I could have taken this round, but it is what it is. Round two was similar to the first, and then I got counter hit. Despite that... minor setback, I was able to take that round. I have no idea what happened over the course of the five days between now and the previous tournament, but I was doing so much better. Honestly, this might even lead to a win. I just need to calm down, play smart, and... Ah, e, ooh. Yeah, it'd be like that sometimes. Remember when I said Strive was a volatile game? This is a pretty good example of that. But whatever, it's fine. It is what it is. We keep our chin up, and we move on to the next match. And almost immediately, I'm shown why you shouldn't leave gaps in your pressure. 
we lose the next interaction, and the first round is over. The momentum is very much on Envy's favor, and I am feeling it. I need to stop his momentum dead in the tracks before I lose this round and possibly the entire game. Do I manage to do that? Of course I fucking do! Who do you think you're talking to? While this was nowhere near the cleanest round, it was a round nonetheless. And while I would love to craft this amazing narrative of how I crawled the match back from the brink of defeat, evening up the score going into the third round, that would make me a liar. The moral of the story, kids, don't let Soul Bad Guy counter hit you. This left Envy up 2 in the set. I had one chance to save myself from descending into the loser's bracket. Though this match wasn't lost yet, in my mind, I felt like it was. Looking at the audio from the recording, you can literally see I'm sat there in silence. Partly from fear, because Envy's really fucking good, like holy shit. But mostly from my arch nemesis, Tilt. Tilt, when talking about competitive video games, is when a player is so annoyed and frustrated that they stop thinking logically and begin acting irrationally, both in-game and unfortunately sometimes in real life. Tilt is something that most players are going to experience at some point, and it's perfectly natural and there's ways to deal with it. You can kind of think of it like a stun gauge, but for someone's mental game. Most players are able to take different amounts of bullshit before entering tilt, with different things filling the tilt gauge more or less. For example, if you get hit with a reversal while trying to do a move, that might fill the tilt gauge a little bit, but not enough to affect you. But if you're fighting somebody and the match is extremely laggy to the point where your moves aren't coming out, then you're more likely to be affected by it. Different players can also take more or less bullshit depending on who they are and their experience. Some players seemingly have an infinite tilt gauge so it never affects them. I am not one of those players. Unfortunately, I'm able to enter tilt very easily, especially when things aren't exactly going my way outside of the game, and going 0-2 in a set against a really good opponent is gonna put me into that state very quickly. As I sit in my chair, staring at my screen, seething in my body, only one thing came to my head. It's over already, isn't it? Envy had defeated me once again, winning the entire set. I join the calling leaders once again, and for a full two and a half minutes say literally nothing. My mental was shattered. It's not looking good. I try to go into training mode and somehow click the tutorial and literally sit there for a whole 20 seconds bathing in my stupidity listening to my friends. It's gonna be fine, it's in the past, we move on. My next opponent was another Geo main by the name of FGC Punisher. The glue eaters had somewhat restored my mental, but the tilt still lingered. Hopefully in this match, I'll find a way to move past it completely. Fun fact, did you know that Punisher is one of the best Geos in the world? Punisher well and truly kicked my ass and it didn't even feel close. While I got some basic pressure and some good interactions out of it, it wasn't enough. Do you guys want to see a true scrub combo? Unblockable, 100% hit rate, O2 in tournament, join Discord call, cry like a bitch. Bro, I Had fucking file. suck dog ass in this game. I'm literally uh, the worst player from the dog shit. Oh, oh, damn, damn, man, it's okay. It's just one tour Did you run. fucking yeah. watch what I just played? As you can see, my tilt meter was a bit full, so I wasn't exactly seeing things logically and needed to blow off some steam. To everyone who was in the Discord call at the time while I was crying like a bitch, thank you, you guys actually really helped me out. And thus, I got a kebab, played Elden Ring, and had a good night. Now for the next run, we are going to have to jump ahead about a week to March 21st. It was at this time I realized that too much grinding can be bad for you and decided to take a small break from tournament runs and focusing more on YouTube videos alongside doing the Celestial part of the challenge. No, oh, bring Dave back! The Celestial grind section unfortunately has been lost to time due to the fact that I didn't record any of it. So just know that while I didn't enter any tournaments, I was still actively playing the game. 
Not enough for a massive increase in level, but I was playing nonetheless. This week off had given me time to rethink my strategy and come up with a completely new idea, putting my face cam at the bottom of the screen. This now makes my editing job much harder, and I also somehow managed to put the game audio and my audio on the same audio layer, so I can't even mute myself. Good job past me, you fucking idiot. But this mix-up must have changed something in the timeline, because for some reason, I wasn't on a stream for my first game. Maybe I'll get someone I can beat. Oh, and they play Jacko. How fun. This is going to be great. Thanks to the power of the shitty webcam at the bottom, you can see the joy in my face. Why did I think this was a good idea? The match starts and I get swamped by the boys, mixed to shit, and instantly lose the first round. I'm starting to see a pattern here, and honestly, I'm close to connecting the dots. It's fine, though. This week is about breaking the mold, trying new things. So I decide to win round two of the first match. Fuck. It's fine, it's fine. If I just play smart, don't let the minions overrun me and go a little bit crazy, I could actually take a game for the first time ever since we started this adventure. It'll be fine. I just gotta keep my cool, you know? Just gotta play well. Fucking go! For the first time in my tournament run history, I was ahead of my opponent in a match. What the fuck? And since it isn't on stream, I can just instantly jump back into the match without having to wait a good minute or so between the matches. It's looking good, guys. I I'm feeling it. Look at the momentum, the pressure, the sh movement. Nothing can stop me. I am invincible. I cannot look. What the fuck? What are you doing, Gecko? Looking back, I have no idea what possessed me in this moment to go for the harder combo that doesn't fucking work there, but that alongside just not finishing this combo here cost me the round. The Jacko carried that momentum into the next match and absolutely demolished me, making the score 1-2. My lead had been crushed, and I was once again on the back foot. At the time, I had no idea why I was losing and trying to figure out a strategy mid-match in order to preserve my run. I actually nearly clawed back the first round from the brink of defeat. However, when I was able to stick Jacko to the wall, I didn't use an optimal ender and it lets her live on a pixel of health. Despite my best attempts, I guess wrong on the block string and lose the round. Do I let this stop me? Do I fuck? I go into round two absolutely swinging and I'm able to take back the match. There was one final round left. The difference between tying it up and going to the loser's bracket once again. Let's see how I do. Oh boy, it's our old friend Tilt coming back to ruin another run. Hi, Tilt. It's great to see you. Oh my god. Go on, get the clips of me raging, guy. <laughs> I thought I had it. I was like, I've done it. I've done it. It's still one. Oh. Yeah, so Tilt kind of manifests itself in different ways, and today it was both anger and just a, a smidge. Just a tiny bit of chronic depression. The fact that I had gone nearly a month without a single tournament win was honestly starting to get me both in the game and out of it. And while with hindsight I can see that I was playing better, since my results weren't changing, I felt like I wasn't improving. I felt like I was hitting a plateau and nothing was getting better, and I had just started. I felt like a failure. But it's in these moments where you feel like everything is terrible that sometimes you come up with your greatest ideas. Could watch the please. I don't know if that would make me feel better, but it would help. It would help me improve. So yeah, fun fact, up until this point outside of editing, I hadn't been watching my replays at all. To this day, I still don't really do it. I can hear every good Strive player wincing and crying over the fact that I'm crying about how bad I am without doing VOD reviews, but in my defense, when you're the only person watching them and you're tilted as fuck, they're not exactly fun. 
which is why I should do them after I've calmed down and find more things out. I'm not defending myself here, I should just review my VODs more. For those of you in the audience who haven't played Strive, you may have noticed I haven't really been bringing up what each character I'm facing can do. I'm only talking about how I won or I lost and showing clips of what happened. This is because while playing in these matches, my knowledge of these characters and their gimmicks was either lacking or straight up just not there. And with Jacko, my knowledge was non-existent. Fun fact, did you know that basically nobody plays Jacko? And if you haven't prepared by playing the three good Jackos in your region, you're gonna be a bit fucked. But now, I'm going to retroactively walk you through what she did as I learned through the VOD review. Jacko is a character with a small amount of HP who uses a gimmick known as the boys. She can send out three boys on the screen and is able to command them to do different things. Attack, defend, return, and self-destruct. While Jacko on her own is a pretty weak character with mid at best buttons, when she has the boys with her she becomes a nigh unstoppable character as she's able to make all of her moves unpunishable and even loop pressure so much so that the opponent isn't able to get out of blocking. This becomes extremely deadly when Jacko puts you in the corner and is able to constantly loop her pressure and has a high low mix up where you have to either block it standing or crouching that can lead to a bunch of damage. While these mix ups can be reacted to, you need to know what to look for in order to react to them. Not to mention, she can stop the pressure and throw you at any time. Because of Jacko's clear strengths and weaknesses, her game plan is to get you in the corner with the boys on screen. Because of this, playing against Jacko, it's good for players to A. Destroy the minions whenever they can, B. Make sure they don't get cornered by Jacko, and C. Keep pressure on her so she isn't able to create space for the boys. With these three simple bullet points, you can begin formulating a game plan in your head with your character on how to beat your opponent's strategy. This, along with your opponent's strategy to counter your character, forms the basis of a matchup in fighting games, and it's important to know your character's matchups and how to play them. Now, I got all of that from watching four matches where I played against this Jacko and saw what did and didn't work. So now, next time I fight her, I'll be able to correctly respond to these situations more. This is the power of reviewing your VODs everywhere. You also begin to notice things that you can improve on in general. For example, I don't know what the fuck my thought process was going for that jump after the forward line. Like, I could have closed the round out there. I could have probably also closed the round out there if I didn't know the team number six page. Yeah, I don't know what to do. Because I'm pretty sure she's plus. Let's do some research. So we need to check two things. We have this, which leaves her at negative 12. And clap. Well, we kind of just need the clap, actually. Oh, look at me. Looking stuff up. Testing stuff out. I'm becoming a brains player more by the minute. Honestly, watching back through the VODs really helped me collect myself for a while. And even watching this all back months later, it's nice just seeing me learn as much as I can from a few simple matches. But all good things must come to an end, as my next match wasn't going to be as wholesome as the VOD review. Are you ready? For those of you who don't know, Mei is a demon from the depths of hell. She has come to Earth with the sole purpose of pissing anyone off she fights and never letting them play the game. I do not like this character, and her entire moveset involves this weird, awkward player style. Play oh my god. Her entire moveset involves this weird, awkward play style, where she cannot be pinned down easily and is able to slip out of basically any situation which puts me on till easily to this day. Is she strong? Kinda. She's not the best, but she's still really annoying. So, this was gonna be a fun match. Duel one. Let's rock. While I did have her pinned down for a while, in typical May fashion, she slipped out of my pressure and immediately put me on tilt. I was so tilted, I ended up being burst baited in the second round and her landing the optimal punish. Oh god. The tilt continued onward into the next match, and even though I was able to win the second round of the match, it wasn't enough to save me from the downward spiral that was my mental state. And even though I did some cool things like baiting this burst, it wasn't going to be enough to defeat the May. With only two rounds under my belt, I take a counter hit in the face and lose the set. I take my headphones off, leave my setup, and slump down on the floor out of the camera's view. Another week, Another 0-2 run. And while in hindsight there was definitely areas in which I had improved, I could feel the crushing weight of defeat beginning to affect me. But hey, there's always next week, right?
I decided to skip out on Salt Mine this week, as my last display at Salty had left me, well, pretty salty. But for Salty EU, I was back next week, ready and more motivated than ever to play. I even started the session out right by fishing. Man, I love fishing. The tournament starts, and graciously, I'm not on stream round one, which is nice. I struggle with the strive lobby, and you've got to be kidding me. I honestly think I have some of the worst bracket look I've ever seen, but I'm also just not that good currently, so shit like this, it scares me. But whatever, by this point, I'm basically numb to round one lashings. Going an entire month without getting a tournament win does that to you, but honestly, maybe now will be the time that I turn it around. After all, with all the celestial grinding I've been doing, who knows? I could even upset this guy. Sometimes, guys, all you have is hope. And I'm hoping not to get absolutely slaughtered right now. Bad news, I'm getting absolutely slaughtered right now. I got shaped. Fuck! It looked like it's gonna be another week in salty EU. Well, I say that now, but at the time I was in full Duma mode, so it was more like, oh fuck, it's gonna be another week of salty EU. Ugh. But then something unexpected happened. Something I didn't see coming and couldn't have predicted through my tilt-colored glasses. Are you ready? What? Somehow, but what I can only describe as divine intervention, my opponent was a floor 8 soul. This would be the first person I've ever fought in Salty EU that wasn't already in Celestial. So, I didn't really know what to do. Normally people like this enter the Salty EU beginner's bracket in order to play people of similar skill level, but here, right now, we're fighting against FM, the floor 8 soul. How did the match go? Well... <laughs> My lawyers have informed me to stop showing this footage as the double fully charged dust is considered cyberbullying. Unfortunately for FM, they were no match for me, and I, finally, after an entire month, had gotten my win. And I felt... Nothing. If anything, I felt bad. I wanted the first win I got to be something I felt like I earned. After a full month of getting my ass kicked by people far, far better than me, and I got... This. Now, I had a bit of a split road in my mind. I had completed my mini goal of finally getting a win in a tournament. However, I felt empty. I felt like the win didn't mean anything. Does it count? Or does it not? A win is a win, but what it represented didn't feel like what I thought it would. Is that what every win is going to feel like? Does winning really feel like this while losing feels terrible? These thoughts began to dwell on my mental, which wasn't helped by the fact that I had a long wait between matches. I decided to check out the new stage and play on Celestial while I waited, which honestly led to one of the best experiences I've ever had in Strive. Genuinely, I've never had so much fun in this game that I did sending fucking Captain Cock through the walls of the White House. What a good time. Shame it was followed by this. Oh boy, Ramlafall, my favorite! This match was another instance of I need to learn the fucking matchup because Jesus Christ, I was getting my ass handed to me and I was not responding correctly. Plus our good friend Tilt made his way back and... I just lost it, I'm gonna be honest. Even though we finally went 1-2, I felt terrible in the moment. I let my emotions get the better of me and once again... I just lost. If you want to know why I'm focusing on my mental and my thought process so much, it's because it's probably the most important part of my gameplay that I need to work on. Sure, I'm not doing the best with my character at this stage, but it's improving over the course of the month. Yet week after week after week after week, I show the exact same problem. I lose a few interactions, I get tilted, I lose even harder, the set is over. If I want to get good, really get good, 
I need to fix this part of myself before I look at anything else. How am I gonna do that? Well, that's something we're gonna all have to figure out together, unfortunately. But, oh, wait, would you look at the time? It's the end of the month, which means it's nearly time for the Celestial Challenge to finish. For those of you who had forgotten, it's okay, I understand, it was like half an hour ago. Celestial is the secret 11th floor in Guilty Gear Strive. If you make it to the Celestial floor, you need to win five matches without losing more than once in order to stay there for the rest of the month. Once the end of the month comes, everyone is knocked out of Celestial apart from a few select players who receive auras and are able to stay in the Celestial floor without having to complete the challenge again. These auras come in three different colors, blue, yellow, and red, and are determined by how high up on the leaderboard you are when the month ends. So, here's the thing. I have no idea how high up on the leaderboard you have to be, and honestly, after asking around, I kept getting different answers. However, I used to be a programmer, so I know that programmers like round numbers, meaning it's not going to be something weird like 678 players. It'll probably be a whole number. Since I keep getting different answers, I'm just gonna shoot as high as I can, but I'm pretty sure if I get at least top 500, I should get an aura. We'll see though. Now, to be honest, most of this process is pretty uninteresting. It's literally just me sitting in my chair with my arcade stick, some snacks, a drink, good ass music, playing some Gilly Gear for several hours as I grind out matches. So we're just gonna skip to near the end of the month. And by that, I mean the end of the month. We started the final grinding session at 457th place with 466 wins. As you can see, I had already secured my top 500 spot, but if we want to make sure that I get my aura, we need to win as much as possible. It was looking to just be another rank session. Maybe I would get tilted, maybe I'd just have a chill time, but then, about an hour or so into the session, something happened. I was fighting this chip right here, and he was clearly better than me. The movement, the combos, the read, C had everything, and was absolutely styling on me. But then, I remembered something that someone had told me in my stream when fighting a chip once. As Geo, if chip does 2D, you should DP because you get a trade combo off of it. Nah, fuck it, I thought. This match is already over. Why don't we just try to get this interaction to work? And from that point forward, I would try to use DP after every 2D in order to hit it. And the crazy thing is, it worked. Not only did it work, it forced him to do this. Did you see it? Zoom in again, look a little bit closer. He didn't go for a follow-up after the sweep. This guy genuinely stopped his pressure in order to respect my DP. And finally, it clicked. I've been going about this whole journey wrong. I had been focusing on the results so much, I had forgotten the most simple step to improving. I need to learn from my mistakes and try new things. In this one match, I finally figured out that to get better, I need to take risks and try dumb things. And here was the place to do it. If in my tournament I had to keep it simple because winning and losing meant more, I needed a place where winning and losing meant nothing. It's perfect! I simply have to try things out in Celestial and bring them to my tournaments. This isn't a ranked session, it's a training round. Winning and losing, it, it's all meaningless. The only thing that matters is that I get better. And from here, the session just got better. I was singing, I was talking, I was now having a good time. It was great. I felt like this was the big thing I was missing. Before this, I had basically been bashing my head against the wall in order to get as many Celestial wins as I could. Now, now I was having a good time. The wins came naturally and the losses didn't bother me as much because I was learning and adapting. It was great. I even got some experience on some matchups I'm not the most common with, like Angie and Eno. It was great! We ended the session with 493 wins at 418th place on the leaderboard, which well beats my estimates for getting an aura of top 500 on the leaderboard. I gave myself a pat on the back, closed the game, and went to bed. After spending the entirety of the 31st and the previous night working to make sure the Persona video was as good as it could be, 
I woke up in the afternoon and decided to boot up Guilty Gear Strive to see if I had gotten my aura. I was optimistic, but there was still the lingering feeling in my gut that I'd gotten something wrong. Moment of truth. I'm gonna find out if we stayed or if it was literally all for naught and we've just, we've fucked up. Staring at the Strive loading screen, there was only one feeling in my body. Anxiety. Please. I'm so nervous. Oh, I'm so nervous. Oh, why does it have to be so dumb? Why is it so dumb? Just, oh, just let me, oh, please. God, please, come on. I, come on. Come on, come on. Come on. So long. Ah, come on, it's been a minute and a half. This feels like the longest minute and a half of my life, bro. Bro, come on. Ah! <laughs> That's it, right? It loads now. Oh my fucking god! Oh, tense. I'm tense. I'm nervous. I'm not ready. I'm. I I was like, I woke up and I was like, oh, I don't care. You know, it is what it is. I just want to improve now. But like, I actually, I actually really care. I actually really, really fucking care. <gasps> No! Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> it wasn't enough. I failed to get an aura. All of the time, all of the effort felt like it was wasted. And I began to feel another emotion. I began to feel very, very angry. <laughs> After three runs, I was able to get back on the first day of Celestial being reset. I channeled all of my anger into one video which has become infamous among certain strive circles, and after the dust had settled, after I had calmed down and I found myself back at the starting line, there was only one thing I was left feeling. Empty. I wanted to give up. I felt like all of that work, all of that effort was for literally nothing. I had put in so much time. So much energy, an entire month of my life into the game. And I had fallen short with no idea how close I was to succeeding. I felt defeated. I was basically done. At least... Most of me was done. I honestly couldn't tell you what it was, but part of me wanted to get back up and keep going. Maybe it was the part of me that fell in love with the game from the start. Maybe it was my content creator brain trying to find a way to salvage all of this work. Maybe it was just the habits created in the past month of doing everything. Maybe it's my shonen protagonist slowly creeping his way out to finally give it one more shot. Maybe I'm secretly a masochist and I don't even know it, but I swore to myself that I wasn't going to let this defeat me. So. I made a deal with myself. One more tournament. One more run. If we didn't get a good win this time, we give up, we post what we can about the series, let the people know we gave it a good shot, and go back to making dumb videos about silly topics. But if we win a match, a good match, we'll see this through to the bitter end. Why did I do this to myself? Well, the answer's simple, because there's always next week. I haven't practiced in like four days. I have a headache. Uh, fucking it's three days. Shit. Fuck. Oh my god, that's not a good excuse. Oh, I haven't played in three days. Uh, I have a headache. Uh, I've only had chicken nuggets today. Uh, I need more excuses. Um, uh, well, I've only had one Pepsi Max today. I'm literally having mine, the second one right now. Uh, the guy's taking a while to like get here. Uh, uh as you can see, I was extremely confident. My first match was against. Fa it's fine. It's fine. It's just a May. She can't hurt you in a way that matters. She's hurting me in a way that matters. Honestly, this match was a lesson in underestimating your opponent. I saw a floor 10 level 300 May, and I thought it was gonna be easy. It was
was not going to be easy. In fact, this match was much more even than I expected it to be with us trading games back and forth. They took round one, I took round two, they took round three and took the first game, they took round run of game two in an extremely convincing fashion and even went for a little BM in the second. They even got it done perfect. Fuck. I was once again 0-2 in a set. I had to bring it back. So, I began playing as best as I could. It wasn't enough. Ah, loser's bracket, my old friend. You know, if this wasn't the end, I could really deck this place out. Make it like a little bachelor's pad, you know? Maybe at a pool table, a pinball machine, a setup so we can play some Melody or COD Zombies, and maybe a bar with as much Pepsi Max as I could drink. Really give the place a nice vibe. Shame it's not looking like that'll be the case, though. Maybe I'll just reminisce about the good times we had while I went- Oh fuck, the next match is already ready. Well, who's it against? Oh, a floor 10 Naga with a low level. Well, uh... Yeah, I kinda just ran this guy over. Man, two tournament sets in a row where I get a non-celestial player and loses round one? The world really wants to give me a break, huh? Well, we know from last time that this isn't what I'm looking for, but we are 1-1 in the tournament for the second week in a row, even if it was just by pure luck. Honestly, Fate, you're gonna have to do much more than that if you want me to stick around. Who's my next opponent, anyway? Apparently it's a player named Vulcanage. Huh, that's weird. I swear I recognize that name, but I can't remember from where. Oh, fuck! <laughs> no! Dude, that's terrifying. Well, that's my tournament. In fact, the Eno kicked my ass so hard, I'm genuinely surprised to this day that I didn't get tilted during that match. Oh. It's him all the way back, before I even properly started this journey. It was the Eno who beat me so hard in my first tournament that I didn't even get a round off of him. You know, sometimes the world works in strange ways. Every single one of us has our own unique experiences, our own perspectives, our own lives. We see hundreds of people every day going about their own lives, yet we barely interact with any of them. The odds of randomly encountering the same person twice in any given situation is generally so small that humans have to come up with concepts to explain them. Fate, luck, fortune, gods, all of these things used by humans to explain situations they cannot understand. So which of these entities made me face you again? It would only be fitting that the star and the end mirror each other, and if I am to lose, if I am to fail this challenge without any chance of redemption, it'd be fitting you'd take it from me. Let's see how much I've improved, I guess. Oh and two. Once again. I'd taken a round, so I had definitely improved, but once again it wasn't enough. This is where the run ends, isn't it? But something's different. Something isn't right. Something isn't here. I'm not tilted. At least not as much as usual. That hole that's in my stomach, that pounding that's in my chest, that ringing that's in my ears, that voice that's in my head. It's gone. It's left a vacant hole for me to fill. It's left it empty. I need to fill it. I need to keep going. I need more power.
Internal temperatures rising And all the voices won't recede I finally found what I was looking for A place where I can be without remorse Because I am a stranger who has found an even stranger war I finally found what I was looking for Let's fucking go! I fucking did it! I fucking did it! I fucking did it! I fucking did it! Ah! I actually fucking won! I actually fucking won! I actually fucking won! I actually fucking won! Oh my fucking god! And just like that, the series was saved. After all that time, all that effort, all that sweat, blood, and death slams, I had finally beaten a player who I believed to be better than me. I was so happy. I would go on to fight an Angie next match who defeated me, but I didn't even mind. I had finally won. And that feeling? It was unlike anything I've ever felt. Eventually, the frequency of my runs began to slow down as I began working more and more on videos like this one. But that didn't mean that I forgot about the challenges I set for myself. In fact, there was still one part that I made sure to pay extra attention to. For basically the entire month of April, I stream Strive exclusively in order to make sure I got as many games in Celestial as possible. As you can imagine, this did wonders for my mental health. 500 fucking wins in eight days! <laughs> Fuck, buddy. Oh, get on the grind. As you may be able to infer, I had somewhat been pushing off the grind and needed to play catch up at the end of the month. Honestly though, can you blame me? Grinding this shit can be tedious even when you've got good mental, you know? Over the next eight days, I had one single task and one single task alone to get top 300 on the leaderboard. Why top 300? Someone in chat told me and I'm, I'm gullible. Society. There were some fun events. I had a first attempt with Carrot of Wisdom, which in another timeline would have made it into the video. However, considering the fact that this script is starting to make me feel fatigued just by looking at the page number that I'm on, I'm going to have to gloss over it. Wow, look at that, he won! If you want to see more wacky antics, just make sure to follow my Twitch stream. I'll probably be streaming after this video goes live if I'm not dead somehow. So please come over and say hi and show me pictures of your cute pets. Thank you. We ended the stream with as many wins as we needed, and I went back into the abyss to grind another day. The next few days were going to be ruthless with a bunch of grinding matches, but I was more than prepared for the challenge. After all, I'd nearly completed this once before. Each day I sat myself Man, down and got to fucking work. Oh, what? Let's
I had done it. Despite the fact that my head was hurting like crazy, I had maxed the top 300 players in win count. However, in my delusion and Strive server's delay, I realized I still needed some wins. I had already won 95 matches in one day, so what's a few more, right? I got back into the queue and prepared to play some more. And then I got a pleasant surprise. Are you ready? <gasps> Never! <laughs> Hey, Nemes. <laughs> I was like literally about to log off. I checked my fucking ranking and stuff, and it's like, oh yeah, if I get five more wins, I've won a hundred matches today. I'm guaranteed the uh, aura. This is my first game of the day, actually. Oh fuck yeah! This is like I've been playing since like four in the afternoon, so uh, my brain is fried. I literally can't think of anything. You can't. No, okay. it's like, it's, it's really hard for me to actually concentrate. It's, really it's okay, you're still better than me. It's fine, just let me run you over, like... Me and Nevis played so many matches that I was able to secure a good lead over my opponents. I'm not joking, by the way. We played 45 matches in a row, and it boosted me by another 35 wins. We were just there for a good hour or two just playing matches in Celestial Light. Look at this shit! Once everything was settled, I had 649 wins and was 282th place on the leaderboard. I took the rest of the week easy, only playing a few games to make sure I secured top 300. And then, before I knew it, the month had ended, and the first of May was upon us. Now, because I live in Europe, I get the short end of the stick when it comes to Strive Auras. Not only does the leaderboard close at an awkward time, the game doesn't update the auras. Always? Oh, whoa, whoa. The game doesn't update the auras until 9 a.m., meaning the entire night is literally useless and cannot be grinded in. However, due to my combination of general anxiety mixed with not getting an aura the previous month, I was too anxious to sleep. I spent the entire night sat in a Discord call with my friends while they played Strive, and I kept continually logging on and logging in, hoping an aura would appear. It was at this time I even recorded all of the Strive avatar emotes that you've been seeing me use in the video. I was so anxious that I basically forced myself to work. However, the time came where the servers were shut down for maintenance. Then, one hour later, Judgment Day had come. Uh... <laughs> you did so much to get this aura. God fuck, please. <laughs> you're so... <laughs> it's like you're not gonna get it. I'm just... <laughs> I've been lied to before about how to get an aura, dude. Like, I just, I fucking hope that they were right. There's no time. way you're not gonna get. There's an aura. no way, right? I was 287th place. There's no way I don't get it, right? Right? Game, come on, please. Enough with the fucking dramatic suspense. <laughs> Come on, you piece of shit, Strive! Oh, shut up. I had fucking done it. After two months of grinding, I had finally gotten an aura. Was it worth it? God, no. Absolutely not. Focusing entirely on wins led to an unhealthy mindset when learning, and I kind of wish I didn't do this part of the challenge, but fuck it. I don't care. We did it. It's over. Banging on the list. I had finished one of the challenges, and now there were only three left to complete. This journey absolutely has had its ups and downs, but I knew that all of these things were possible. I just needed to push myself and train correctly. We nearly failed at the start, but trust me, we're going to get there. And this aura is proof of that. 
So this originally was where the video was supposed to end. However, there was something I'd forgotten about coming up. I was so caught up in grinding Celestial and finding in online tournaments that I'd failed to notice one simple thing. The monthly Sunday face-off tournament was just a few days away. Today is Sunday the 8th of May. Sunday face-off tournament. I'm gonna be honest, I kind of forgot it was today. Uh, I thought it was like, at the end of the month, so I still have more time to train. But, I feel pretty good about myself. I'm gonna be real, Leeds isn't the strongest. It's pretty... Alright. It's kinda fine, but I'm yet to win there. Still a lot of flaws in my game plan, I still... Double jump, air super, uh, a bit too much. And I know for a fact there is at least one guy who might be going who can definitely fucking deal with that. But... It's possible that I win this. Is it probable? No, definitely not. But depending on who's there today, this might be a dub. I hope I get there safe and I hope I get something to eat because I haven't eaten yet. And that's kind of not good. I should really go and do that. I'm gonna go get the bus and then I'm gonna eat something. So, check back in with you. Uh, hopefully, when I'm in the menu. Oh boy, I sure hope you do like establishing shots because I was way too nervous to actually record my matches. <laughs> <clears throat> anyway, for those of you who forgot what we talked about in the intro over like an hour ago now, Sunday Face Off is the monthly tournament for Leeds. In the previous month, I made it all the way to Grand Finals, only to be struck down by BP Tank, a Zado player and a renowned commentator. While our last encounter probably wouldn't have been described as close, I was more than confident that I'd be able to perform better this time. Also, just a heads up, since I forgot to actually record any of the footage from the tournament, we're going to be recreating some of these matches with Core cool Visual. While everything else in this video has definitely been 100% accurate, the footage you're about to see wasn't from said matches. So while the results are real, just know that they played out differently. Anyway, with that out of the way, let's get into the bracket. My first opponent was a fellow Geo player. If I'm entirely honest, the Geo Mirror kinda scares me. While every other matchup has specific things that both players are able to do in order to counter the other, Mirror matches are generally a test of pure skill, and with Geo being the most basic and honest character in the game, that's no exception. However, luckily for me, my opponent was a little bit greener than I expected, and didn't put up much of a fight. He said he should take notes, shook my hand, and left the setup going 0-3. While I was definitely worried that this could be classed as IRL cyberbullying, I'm happy to announce he still went to the tournament next month. I didn't unfortunately because of reasons beyond my control, but that's a story for a later video. Anyway, I was feeling confident in myself after my first match. Round 1 of a tournament is always the most nerve-wracking, especially when you have no idea who you're up against. So winning so convincingly was a pleasant surprise. My next surprise, however, wasn't as pleasant. My next opponent was three things that I feared. Fear one, he was seeded second in the entire tournament, meaning he was supposedly only slightly weaker than the man who ruined my last run. Considering that I would trust these TOs with my life, this had me slightly worried. Fear 2. Whispers around the venue say that this man is the biggest lab monster in the entirety of the UK. While this claim is most likely blown out of proportion, having this title bestowed upon you at all means that you at least know what you're doing. And finally, Fear 3. He was hovering Angie on the character select screen. What I was about to deal with was not only someone who spends more time looking for ways to deal with my character than I actually spend playing the game, they were doing it with a low tier. The option select was already in place, and I could feel the pressure of the match mounting up on me. I hadn't actually spoken to them since going to the venue, and honestly, I don't even remember if I said anything when I sat down. But I do remember the match. Game 1 was close, really close. This guy obviously had a lot of knowledge about the matchup and my character, and was able to dance around my Geo with ease. It's not like I was going to lay down and take it though, and was able to get a few cheeky hits in and block a lot of his pressure. Enough cheeky hits and blocking that I end up taking the first game by a narrow margin. It didn't last though. He came back with amazing defense and uses of 12s in order to secure a second game before I even noticed what happened. It felt like I had no idea how to play the game, 
game against him for the first round, but in the second, I noticed something. Something so familiar it would literally be impossible to miss. Every time I hit him, every time he lost an interaction, every time things didn't go his way, he would tut, shake his head, and move his arm. This man's tilt gauge was being filled. After the months of grinding, I knew that feeling all too well, and I knew exactly what I needed to do. My game plan shifted from simply playing the matchup to annoying the Angie as much as possible. Instead of simply throwing him out the spin whenever he did it, I would dash kick and then throw him in order to make sure that he knew I knew how to counter it. I would super whenever he left Fujin too long. I would attempt to jump every fan toss he threw. If he jumped after Fujin, I countered it. Everything I could do to exploit the weaknesses of his character, I would do them. Not just because it's what you're supposed to do in the matchup, but because I knew that it would piss him off. And it worked. 3-1 to Gecko Squirrel. I had upset the second seed of the tournament and was on my way to winner's semis. I simply just need to win one more game and I get my shot at revenge. Winner's quarterfinal was against a very special player who we may talk about again sometime in the future. Everybody, meet your boy Zulu. Zulu started going to the Strive locals pretty soon after I started going and we get along very well. They always make sure to play friendly with me whenever we're in the venue and they're always very inviting and fun to chat with. They even pop into my stream from time to time. But that's not the reason I'm introducing you to them directly right now. No, in fact, they're extremely special for a different reason. Zulu is a PS4 chip player. Now that may not sound extremely incredible, but it's more about how they play their character than what console they play on. If you remember from the stereotypes video, chip players are either cracked mix-up players who will stop at nothing to see you dead, or massive weaves that think they're cracked at rushdown but always end up messing things up. Zulu is somehow the exception to this rule. While they seem to be a bit of a weeb, they play chip in a... unorthodox way. Instead of getting you in the corner and running mad pressure to kill you, Zulu will get a life lead and run away as fast as they can. While normally this type of playstyle is reserved for the devil due to their massive hitboxes, Zulu makes this playstyle work with Chip by throwing smart shurikens and using good alpha blades. They also sometimes just go in when you least expect it. As you can imagine, this becomes extremely irritating to fight if you don't know what you're doing. And even if you do know what you're doing, Zulu is no pushover. Not by a long shot. I really want to say this match was another piece of cake, but honestly, the dude kind of pushed me to the breaking point in-game and mental several times in the set, and I'm very lucky for what happened. After the third match, I started landing anti more consistently and converting them into counter-hit combos, leading to devastating wall breaks, which led to a 3-1 victory. However, it really didn't feel like it. It did not feel like a clean victory at all. This man's absolutely going to go far, and he's going to give me an aneurysm along the way. But... With one more victory under my belt, it was time for winner's finals. And who else would be waiting for me but the person who put me on this path to begin with? The man who denied me my first ever tournament victory. It was time for my rematch with Tank. Mankind knew that they cannot change society. So... One whole month had passed since I last fought BP Tank. During my grinding session, I never once saw his name in any lobby I entered, or any server I joined. It's like he was a ghost, sent to haunt Sunday Face-Off, like the final boss at the end of a long RPG, waiting to be discovered by the player. What I had been training for had led up to this moment. All of the success, the failures, the pride, the salt, every single bit of it had led up to this one match. Winner is guaranteed second place. Loser has to play for the loser's bracket. I was nervous, but I knew I had a safety net. He asked me what song I wanted to play. In all honesty, I can't even remember what song we ended up playing. I just remember locking in my character, bumping his fist, and playing the best damn strive I ever could. Duel 1. Something Life is alive Each running 
I had done it. It was a close set, but I came out victorious. I was in grand finals on the winner's side. One more match like that, and we'll have my first ever local. Holy shit, one more match like that, and I've won my first ever local. Nope, nope, Gecko, come on, calm down, calm down. We're so close, it's okay, just breathe and relax a little bit. They've still got to play through the losers first. Since this is the first time we're in Grand Finals, and hopefully not the last, I might as well go through how Double Elimination Grand Finals work. You have one person who got to Grand Finals from the winner's side, going up against whoever won the loser's finals on the loser's side. Since the winner of loser's finals has already lost a set, if they lose again, they are out of the tournament. But since the winner of the winner's finals hasn't lost at all, they have to lose two sets in order to be kicked out of the tournament. If the player in losers beats the player in winners, they reset the bracket and have to play another set. Basically, if you don't understand that, just imagine that for this next match, I have an extra life compared to my opponent. Speaking of my opponent, I should probably check out the loser's bracket, shouldn't I? I'm pretty sure I'm going to be fighting Tank again, and since I just beat him, I'm not too worried about the match. Oh. Oh no. Tank didn't win in losers finals. Zulu did. This was not what I was expecting. I'd been practicing against Zalos as much as I could in preparation for this tournament, and now in grand finals, I had to fight a chip who plays unlike any other chip I've ever fought against. This could be bad. Really bad. I shouldn't worry too much. I've already beaten Zulu in a tournament before, but he just blitzed through losers without stopping for a break, and I'm starting to get tired. It's okay. I have the buffer of being in winner's bracket. If I lose one set, I can just readjust and take it back in the second set. We can just use these first few matches to warm up. Duel one. Let's rock. It's all tied up. 2-2. Two, two. I can feel my energy leaving my body. My head is starting to hurt. My stomach's starting to growl. If I'm going to win this, I need to win it now. I can't take another set of this. I'd be fucked if I keep going. Well, here goes nothing. <laughs> I have won Sunday face off. I won a clean 30 pound, which I immediately spent on pizza that I got for me and my flatmate later that night. I was extremely tired. I stuck around the venue for a bit, but I didn't end up playing any more Strive. I was exhausted. But even though I was tired, I felt complete. I had trained so hard for this moment. I went through so much and now it was finally here. I'm one of the best geos in England. Not bad for an old tour, huh?
with two of the four tasks completed in the first episode, this could be a really short series, huh? Like, we're just gonna make it out of pools at EVO and we'll be completely fine. I'm more fired up than ever. I got this 100%. Thank you to everyone who I fought in this video. The journey literally wouldn't have happened without you. I'm feeling like this is going to go well for me. As long as there isn't any major changes to the game, I should be fine. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you next time.